Thyroid disorders can be divided into hypo and hyperthyroidism. Today we are going to talk about hyper, it means you are producing more thyroxin compared to what normal people understand. So you have TSH low and the T4, T3 level is very high. So where your car engine is racing into fifth gear, your tensile metabolism goes faster, so you have much sweating, tachycardia or heart rate going up, weight loss, diarrhea, you know, you feel a lot of So that condition uh, is entirely different from hypothyroidism, in which the TSH tends to go down. The common condition is hypothyroidism, which is entirely different. The other spectrum of the disease, hypothyroidism, it means the TSH goes down and you are in the fifth gear. So, so most patients with hypothyroidism will have TSH very low and the T4, T3 levels very high. Hypothyroidism, that means that you are producing more thyroid hormone in the body. Most common disease what you see in day-to-day -day life is hypo, means low thyroxine, where people take thyroid replacement therapy. This is exactly opposite of hypothyroidism. It means you are producing or released more thyroid hormone from the thyroid gland. So it is entirely different disease and people tend to confuse that thyroid disease is same. So it is a different spectrum of disease where you are producing or released more thyroid hormone either temporarily or on a long term basis. So the treatment is entirely different. So going back to the thyroid gland, thyroid gland is situated below the voice box, it's like a butterfly gland, it produces thyroid hormone. So this is constantly required for day to day metabolism. So the thyroid disorders, hypothyroidism can be divided into what we call Thyroiditis, when you release more thyroid hormone compared to the great type of hyperthyroidism which is autoimmune thyroid disease where you are not simply releasing but you are also producing more and releasing more and toxic nodule body where one of the nodules in the thyroid start producing more so they are broadly divided into three for patients understanding that we need to really distinguish between the broadly three different types before we go for a treatment so classically the great hypothyroidism one of the where you start producing more because thyroid gets enlarged from there to there and it can also affect your eyes around 20-30% of the patients can have eyes get affected so it's overactive thyroid glands results into more thyroid get enlarged it, it can present as a coiter, a uniformly enlarged usually and you can have enlarged eyes as well and when you have more thyroid hormone, you are going into the fifth gear. It means you are producing more thyroxine and your metabolism goes high. You feel hot, you know, you have got bulging eyes, you can have bulging eyes. You have a large thyroid, your pulse rate starts going up high, your blood pressure can go up high. You can have weight loss, muscle wasting, edema or the swelling around the leg. You can have menstrual changes, you can have diarrhea, you can have tremors. You can have swelling of your fingers as well. So there are multiple things can happen. But most usually patients usually present with a sweating, palpitation, weight loss, which is usually explained. It can happen in any age group. It can happen in younger to older, but more common in females. So we need to distinguish between the, these two where, where we make to show you if your tap is overflowing and your spillover compared, it is just a spillover. So that's very important that we should distinguish between two do by doing a thyroid scan, which is a scan that you have to go into the little tunnel, in which we make sure your your tap is off and you just spill over. In other means, we give we don't give any drug to stop this tap. We give you a drug to stop this tap. So it's very important to get the distinguish between these two conditions because the treatment is entirely different. So if you have been diagnosed to have where the tap is switched on on a long term basis, then we have three treatment options for great hypothyroidism. First option is usually medications, which usually we give for 12 to 18 months period or longer. We do not keep giving you for longer therapy. In a rare cases, we can give you a low dose for longer therapy. The second option is radioablation, that we ablate the gland. It means by giving you a, a sip of a liquid iodine, which is radioactivity and that destroys the thyroid gland completely but that takes few months time. The third option usually when there is a multiple goiter, quite quick, permanent but options which is less frequently used are surgery option. The commonest option is the neomarkazole option which is the thiamide, th thiamides but usually they are very safe treatment but some patients need to can have rashes, joint aches and a very rare side effect where your bone marrow which produces white cells they can go down and you can have more prone to have infections.
So if you are taking pneumonosol type medications, that you should be very careful that if you get a severe sore throat or high fever, you must stop the medication, get your WBC count and come back to us. And that's the one of the very rare side effects. Usually start with very high dose, maybe 60 milligrams and gradually cut down the dose. You would require a monthly thyroid functions over the period of 18 months to 2 years. The biggest disadvantage of this treatment is that there is always the chances that it can come back again. So you are not going to cure this thyroid permanently because there is always a chance of remission, uh, relapse in, uh, in, in few years time. So in a young lady, you know, it, 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 it can happen over the three or four episodes over the period of the next few years time. So that's why we sometimes do not recommend this. But otherwise, easy to take, but required regular follow-up. Cost of the therapy is also low. And, but it's a avoid calling permanent hypothyroidism. And the only problem is that it's not safe in pregnancy. So we also have a large, large number of young women who come in treatment, we do not usually recommend this medication during treatment. In rare situations, we can, but we have the different options to during second and third stage, second and third trimester. Radioiodine, which is usually disliked by the patients, but very first line therapy in majority of, majority of part of the world, almost used for the last 60 years time. We basically ablate, means we, we by laser, uh, indirectly by laser or radioiodine, we destroy the thyroid gland. And when we destroy the thyroid gland, the thyroid permanently gets low and you do not produce enough thyroxine. When you are not producing enough thyroxine, your thyroid goes into hypo. So we are creating hyper into hypothyroxine. In other words, we are creating, destroying the thyroid glands to create another disease called hypothyroidism, which is very easy to manage and we can give you thyroxine very easily all your life. So the permanent hypothyroidism, you require thyroxine, safe therapy. You have to avoid pregnancy for approximately six, uh, one year or so, and you have to be not to be very close contact with the, with, with the group or your family member for first few days time, which will give you instructions before we go for a therapy. So this is a reasonably good therapy, cause permanent hypothyroidism. The chances of coming back to hyper again again is less, is less compared to the neomagazol. So the next question is why do we create it? Because it's difficult to create treat great hypothyroidism because we know it keeps coming back again. And it's very easy to treat hypothyroidism. And it's well accepted internationally that this should be the maybe the possible first treatment of option, especially in younger and even in older people. Surgery, usually if the thyroid gland is enlarged, there are suspicions of any cancer in the gland, and the, the goiter is very big and it's very unlikely that it's going to come down. So we tend to consider surgery, but usually a third option. Surgery has its own advantages, disadvantage. Definitely, it's also post permanent hypothyroidism, but it can damage the nerves around it. It can cause voice, uh, voice hoarseness of voice, and the risk of the scar, and the risk of infection and bleeding always remains with any surgery. So one word about the thyroid eye disease, which is common in autoimmune graves ophthalmopathy, where the eye tends to get bulged because of the swelling of your eye muscles and the fatty areas around it. So the eye tends to bulge. It can be very bad disease, which can lead to blindness, a little problem which can cause redness of your eyes. So these also need to be monitored who have autoimmune or graves hyperthyroidism. And if you have any redness or any bulging of eyeballs, you must report to us because there are certain therapy like steroid therapy that we tend to recommend in patients of Graves hypothyroidism. So these are the conditions, these are the presentations that you can have in Graves hypothyroidism.